Hey guys, Colin here from CH Gadgets. So, if you remember, I recently did a video on this channel where I was talking about TCL 10 Pro and how it was really good for the price that it was being sold at. Well, here we are again, but this time we're going to be talking about the successor to the 10 Pro and how they have added some well needed upgrades to this newer model. So, the question here is are these upgrades groundbreaking in any way? Well, I don't know, maybe or maybe not. But if there's one thing we can all agree on, improvements of any kind is always welcome. In the TCL 20 Pro 5G, there is a newer, more powerful processor, the Snapdragon 750G and the Adreno 619 GPU. It also has a larger display with a slightly higher resolution at 1080 by 2400. There is 5G technology in the mix, which means that you should have partial to full coverage with AT&T, T-Mobile, US Cellular, Cricket Wireless, and maybe, just maybe, be Verizon Wireless, but don't quote me on that. Just make sure that you confirm with your carrier before you go ahead and click that buy button. You also get an IP52 rating, which means you should have limited dust and water resistance. And there's a new addition to this flagship line. You also get 15 watt wireless charging. And this is the same 15 watt wireless charging that you would find in most high end flagship smartphones, such as the Galaxy S21 Ultra. And it's definitely faster than what you would get in the brand new Z Fold 3 or the Z Flip 3. Another significant update to this newer model over the previous one. This comes with a new main camera sensor versus the one that was in the 10 Pro. But we'll definitely get into more on that later. I am really liking this newer design of the 20 Pro and this marine blue colorway looks so much better in person than when you're looking at it on the website or on Amazon. Maybe it's just my personal bias because blue is my thing, but this color is definitely fire. The phone has a really sleek modern profile whenever you hold it in your hands. And I think it's because of how thin the metal frame is. And because of this thin metal frame, it has some really low profile buttons on the side, which also adds to the overall minimal aesthetics of this phone. What I also like about the TCL Pro line, they still manage to carry over that frosted matte back glass finish from the previous generation, which was definitely part of its appeal in my opinion. But this time they've made it a little bit more stylish with a dual tone look by adding a glossy strip along the backside that happened to also highlight the TCL logo and it has a really flat camera module inside. Which from my experience, this looks like one of the flattest camera modules that I've seen on a smartphone thus far. There's absolutely no lens element or anything protruding whatsoever. Just smooth glass to the touch, which feels really nice and gives it a really premium look and feel. So here's one thing that is really impressive about TCL smartphones. The displays are really amazing. And I guess you could make the argument and say, yes, it should be because TCL is known for making some of the best TVs on the market. And you're probably be right but they have managed to port over some of their next vision technology into their smartphone displays. And it's really impressive. And that means that this AMOLED panel is capable of displaying some really accurate colors. Basically, the next vision to display algorithm that is in these newer models is designed to take images and elevate them to their truest form. Which means it will enhance the shapes, the colors, the clarity, the detail, especially while watching videos and viewing photos on these displays such as scrolling through your Instagram feed. The display is only 60 Hertz. So if you're about that I refresh rate 90 or 120 Hertz life, then this may not be the smartphone for you right now. If there's any constellation, the 20 Pro 5G does feel a little bit zippier in the performance with that Snapdragon 750G versus the 10 Pro's Snapdragon 675 11 nanometer processor. So with this more powerful processor along with six gigs of RAM, navigating and app switching is really fluid and really enjoyable. I played some resource intensive games, you already know, a little Genshin Impact, and it performed really well. However, I did experience a few drop frames a couple of times, but that was after I was playing for a couple hours and the device was getting really hot to the touch. 
So your situation might feel a little bit different since my situation was a little bit more extreme, but definitely let me know how it worked out in your situation in the comment section. Okay, so TC went ahead and did a little switcheroo with the main camera sensor and swapped out the Samsung Bright S5K GW1 ISO cell sensor that was in the 10 Pro and replaced it with the Sony IMX582 Exmor RS CMOS sensor in this newer model, which at first glance, you might be thinking that on paper, the bright ISO cell sensor from Samsung should be a better technical performer as far as photos in the nighttime and daytime is concerned. But I think they made the switch to this newer sensor for one of two reasons. Number one, there was probably a shortage of the previous sensors that they use in the 10 Pro, which means that they couldn't get the amount that they need for this newer model, which is highly probable, right? Or number two, they believe that they can optimize this newer sensor to get better results out of the camera versus their Samsung sensor, since this is one of Sony's Exmor RS CMOS sensor. So let me simplify it for you a little bit. The XMO RS means that this sensor is using the back illuminated structure, which is the same exact layer, but just stacked in a different order. And by putting the photodiodes before the wire layer, there's almost no light obstruction from the wire layer, which now allows this smaller sensor to have a much higher resolution without decreasing the light sensitivity which means that this should have a better overall performance versus the previous generation. And they've also added optical image stabilization to this newer system, which is not typical for a smartphone at this price point, but we're definitely gonna test it out to see if they're using this sensor to its full capabilities and what the results are. We also have a 16 megapixel, 16 millimeter ultra wide lens with 123 degree field of view, as well as a two megapixel macro sensor and a two megapixel depth sensor. By the way, there is also a new 32 megapixel F2.5 wide angle front facing selfie camera that is capable of shooting 4K at 30 frames per second and 1080p at 30 and 60 frames per second with HD and they said they've made some well-needed upgrades to the camera algorithm on this newer model. But enough of the spec talk. Let's check out some of these samples and then you can tell me what you think. And I'm also going to share my opinion versus the 10 Pro, how this one performed. Let's go. So judging from some of these samples, it is clearly evident that the new camera hardware is way more capable than the previous gen to produce some better results. And trust me, the 10 Pro cameras was really good in my opinion. I was presently surprised by how sharp and detailed the photos came out and the colors were much richer than what the 10 Pro used to produce. The dynamic range has improved significantly since these new improvements are so balanced in how they maintain the highlights and preserve the shadow detail. It is not perfect because sometimes it can get really aggressive with the sharpening and other times it can have a little bit too much saturation to some scenes. But it doesn't get too crazy and on average, the non-pixel peeping person may not even notice these little quirks unless they pinch the zoom to examine the photos pixel peeper. However, those are the type of things that can definitely be fixed with a camera update which I'm hoping they would roll out very soon. On the other hand, I did notice a little lens flare from some of the images and I think it could be a result of the cameras being recessed under the Gorilla Glass 5 versus being in a camera island and protrude out beyond the glass. But I could be wrong, what do I know? On the flip side, the portrait mode shots are really good. It does a convincing enough job to separate the subject from the blurry background. Although there were a few occasions where the edge detection could have been a little bit better but I suppose those are also things that could be fixed in an upcoming update. There is a lot to like about cameras on the TCL 20 Pro 
and I'm really impressed by the results that it can produce. And it is by no means perfect, but it is definitely making some good strides in the right direction. So back to my initial question at the start of this video. Are these upgrades groundbreaking in any way? Maybe not, but it is definitely significant enough to elevate the TCL 20 Pro above the 10 Pro and also place it as a significant contender in this price class. And it could be a really good contender for the OnePlus 9. And if you wanna see these two faced off in a comparison video, make sure you smash that like button and leave a comment and let me know down in the comment section. Of course, it is challenged with a few quirks that you may have to consider if you plan to pick one up for yourself or as a gift for someone, such as the in-display fingerprint sensor is not as fast as some of the higher priced flagship smartphones, but it is definitely adequate enough to get the job done and it is still reliable. There's no stereo sound out of this one since it only used one bottom firing speaker, but it does sound good. It is not waterproof, but you do get an IP52 rating, which should cover you for some minor splash and some minor dust exposure. And last but not least, it only has a 60 hertz display in an era where 90 and 120 hertz displays are all the craze now. Now, it's not all bad because this phone has a lot going on for it. And even if you don't want to call it a flagship smartphone, it still has the heart, the looks, the feels, and some of the reflexes of more higher price handsets and it definitely deliver a lot more than a lot of phones in this price class. The curved display really adds to the visual appeal and creates a really enjoyable watching experience. The day-to-day -day use of this phone is fast enough to run a few games as well as some applications both for work and personal use. Fun fact, it has a higher blaster so you can consolidate all your remotes into your smartphone. Another fun fact, it also has a headphone phone jack, which is always a pleasure to see on any smartphone these days. There is also an expandable storage through the micro SD card slot, and I think all the way up to one terabyte. Plus it already comes with a really large capacity of 256 gigs. This TCL series now supports wireless charging. You can buy it unlocked with the freedom to choose any carrier you want. It also has the latest Bluetooth 5.1, and you can have up to four Bluetooth devices connected at the same time plus it supports almost all the codecs that are available on any earbuds these days what TCL is doing here they're definitely trying to give you a lot of phone for a little bit of money which is always cool in my book now the truth is this phone is really good and it's also really good for the price but there are phones out there right now also on this channel that are just as good or probably even better for the same price or maybe just a little bit less. So you definitely have to consider those when you're thinking about buying this. But if you're a TCL fan and you like this color, like I like this color, and you like what they're doing here, because the camera is really good, the display is really good, the overall package is a good package, then I definitely recommend this one. But like I said, recommend it with consideration but I definitely recommend it. So that's it, that is it for me. Uh, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And if you appreciate me taking all this time to test this out and do all this work, make sure you smash that like button and definitely give this video a thumbs up and leave your comment down in the comment section. Even if you don't have nothing to say, it really helped the algorithm to let them know that I'm doing something here. So you could just leave, okay down in the comment section or good video down in the comment section and i appreciate you thank you for watching it's your boy and i'm out peace